Now let's tackle some real estate myths. All right, some of the most common real estate myths. The first one being you need to be rich. You don't need to be rich. That's wrong. A lot of people have uh, the impression that to start real estate investing, you need to be wealthy. You need to be already driving a nice car. You need to become from a wealthy family. Wrong. I'll show you how you can start real estate. If you would like to start investing in real estate, you don't need 100% of the property price. You need, uh, depending on where you are in your country, you need around 5 to 30% of the property price. The rest will be a loan that you would take from the bank, or if you buy a repossessed property from the bank, mortgage property, and you'd pay that loan monthly. Uh, the loan period is usually 10 to 30 years, again, depending on where you live. But that makes your monthly payment around, um, for your first property, I would say around $250 to $500 monthly. So if you have a salary to protect you uh, and secure you month by month and guarantee that you could pay back the loan, that's when you can start making money. Even better than a salary, if you have some passive income, cash flow to be paying your monthly, your, your monthly mortgage, that's where, it get, that's where it gets interesting. So you don't need to be rich. You need to have 5% minimum of the property price and you need to have the cash flow to pay that loan monthly until you could fix and flip the apartment and sell it for more or until you can uh, put a tenant inside it and the tenant can start paying the bank which is going to your loan pay down by the way and the interest of the bank so your tenant so you pay you buy a property five percent find a tenant the tenant is paying the bank and you can go buy your second property now all right we'll get into that later it's called the monopoly effect so that's one, you don't need to be rich. Number two, real estate takes a lot of time. People ask me all the time, isn't it a headache dealing with all the tenants all the time? Uh, or, you know, fixing the toilet, fixing um, the electricity plug, people, your tenants always complaining and calling you. It doesn't take a lot of time, guys. All right, there's people working nine to five every single day. I only spend one or two hours with my tenant at the end of the month. And that's if I do spend the time. So what if the kitchen breaks down or the bathroom breaks down? Oh, uh, oh, is that right? I broke down? Just call the service man. Tell him to go there. It's just one hour or two hours. You know, in fact, it's a prestige job. Real estate can help you to reach financial freedom. Real estate can help you quit your job. You know, just after your first or second property, you could already stop uh, working uh, nine to five and you could start working on your real estate projects. Number three, so it doesn't take a lot of time. Just one or two hours at the end of the month, beginning of the month. Three, a lot of people have the, a misconception on buying. They think buying is better than renting. And yes, in some cases that might be true, but it's not true in all cases. And me personally, I don't think you should buy a home and uh, live in it. See, if you buy a home and live in it, it's no longer an asset, it's a liability. Because an asset is something that puts money in your pocket. A liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. So if you saved your money for 10 years and you could finally buy a new home, <laughs> the most common mistake in the world is that people save up all their money and they buy their first home uh, with the bank or without the bank and they go sit on it. They saved all that cash and they go sit on it. And especially if you have a mortgage, now you have to work and pay the bank back every month. That's putting money out of your pocket. All right, that's not cash on cash investing because when are you gonna get your return on investment back if you're living in it, if you're living in your investment? I don't think buying is better than renting when you wanna live somewhere. I, I think you should invest and rent where you live. See, when you invest where you live, uh, when you invest uh, in a property and you put a tenant inside, you can easily calculate, okay, I'm getting back my money in 10 years. Uh, my tenant is paying the bank. I am renting somewhere. I'm flexible and movable. I can go here. I can go there. And that's how it should be. If you get bored of a place, you could easily just change locations. But if you live where you own and you want to uh, change locations later on, you have to there's so many things you have to consider. Packing, unboxing everything, boxing, moving, who's gonna take my place, who's gonna pay the bank every month. It's generally not 
the right thing to do. And if you buy a property uh, and you live in it, another another downfall is that you can't get your second property. It, it, it's not how it works unless you save again for ten years. And you know, and you know what else? People go move countries, and they don't even know if they're gonna like the place. Chances are, after five years, they'd want to move again. And they bought a property, they go live in it, and five years later, they just sell it. And that's, that's wrong. You're not supposed to sell properties after five years. If you want to reap the full benefits, I've said it again, time and time again, you've got to hold on to your property for 10 to 15 years. So generally, for me, in all cases and scenarios, I don't think you should live where you invested. I, I, I think maybe you can if it's your fifth, sixth property or more, but... If you're starting out in real estate, your first or second property, you should always stay away from it and invest and make sure the tenant is paying the rent. So these are just three myths that I thought was important to share. It's the most common myths. See, you don't need to be rich. It doesn't take a lot of time and buying is not better than renting. Rent where you own and uh, invest, don't buy. There's a difference. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time and I hope my video today was valuable for you. Till next time, don't forget to subscribe.